before we get into today's questions, and I want to do my best to not have all this noise going on. I'll probably use something in Final Cut Pro that cuts the noise out. But this is one of my favorite places in the building. It's pretty cool. If you look, this is, I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's a 3D printer, right? We use the, we have a couple of them, and we use these all the time. Right now, and I don't know if how well you can see, but this is creating a baffle for a new FR5 speaker that Chris is making. And here's where we can try out all kinds of cool stuff. We can figure something out. Chris will noodle on something. He'll design in SolidWorks around that. And then we print it, we try it, we measure it, we listen to it, we tweak it, and we do it again. And finally, after literally hundreds of these 3D pieces, we come up with a design. Now, we couldn't have done this years ago. I mean, this is pretty cool stuff. And over here is our famous Tesla coil. <laughs> and some people on the tour come by, they want to hear it. All right, enough of that. I just wanted to show you what you were, what you were looking for, uh, looking at. So Roger in South Carolina writes to me, and he says, Paul, I'm about to select room treatments to control the first reflection points for my FR30s. Ooh, good job, Roger. The, they are spectacular speakers, by the way. Well, thank you, sir. I couldn't agree more. And they started out life here on this printer. Uh, but I believe you prefer diffusion over absorption. Why is that? The folks selling room treatments I'm working with recommend absorption for better full frequency range control. Yeah, they're clearly not audiophiles. They are probably more into measurements than they are into listening. And I find this all the time. And, and, I, and I say that without knowing these people. So that's probably very unfair. Um, but I'm just guessing here because my style of listening, what I like to listen for is life. I want my music to be alive, to, to sound like there's people there in the room, not some anechoic chamber, to exaggerate a point, uh, of absorption. So I know a lot of acousticians love absorption. It makes their measurements look better. It can absorb peaks where you don't want them. But it robs the music of life. And that's why I am a fan of diffusion rather than absorption. And let's be clear, there's, unless you've got a big, big room, there really isn't a whole lot of ways to make a room perfect. So everything we do is going to be a compromise. What you want is the best compromise possible and to know what it is you're looking for in sound. If you are like me, and you want a live sound. Not by live, I don't mean echoey. I mean to where there's life in the music. When somebody's playing a guitar, the notes are ringing, the strings are ringing, you're hearing the, the overtones, you're hearing people breathing, and, and just as if you're in the studio. And you do that by diffusing the sound rather than trying to suck it up. And the last thing I'm gonna say about it, yeah, right. In, in this video. <laughs> the last thing I'm going to say about it in this video is that without going crazy, it is technically almost impossible to evenly absorb all frequencies. High frequencies are easy, but the lower the frequency goes, the more difficult it is to absorb it properly. And therefore, it gets kind of skewed. Not so many highs, bit more in the mid-range and the bottom end. But in diffusion, if you do it right, you'll get a lot closer to conditioning the room so that what you're hearing is what you want to hear. And that is a brief explanation of why I prefer diffusion to absorption. So feel free to email me at any time. Good luck with your FR30s. Let me know. Send me a picture. I'd love to see how those work out. Thanks. All right. And this is still going on here. I love it. <laughs> Take it easy. Bye.